Now to the report from Oxfam. It finds the world's richest 1% will soon own more than half of all wealth on the planet. But there are some questions about the research, and I talked about it with Oxfam researcher Deborah Hardoon. I asked her to explain who makes up the top 1%. So to be classified as being in the top 1%, you need a net wealth of about 800,000 US dollars. So that includes everyone above $800,000, right up to the richest person in the world, um, of Bill Gates with $76 billion. So it's quite a wide group of people in terms of people's wealth. The majority of people in that category are based in North America, 42% of people in the top 1% are North American, and 35% are from Europe. So it's predominantly wealthy people from the world's wealthiest countries. Deborah, let's talk about your methods here, finding that the top 1% will own more wealth than the rest of the world. We're going to show you some of the graphics in this report. The first one shows the trend for wealth since the year 2000, and today it's basically exactly what it was in 2000. Then the second graph shows your projections. It seems that the trend is going to drastically change. So what accounts for that change, and how did you make the projection? Well, when we looked at the share of global wealth that the top 1% had since 2000, we can see that they've already had a very large share. So it's been fluctuating between the, the 44 to 48% over the last decade. What we also noticed was that in 2010, there was an inflection point in the graph, the, the first graph that you're looking at. So suddenly in 2010, there was a, a, a strong uptake in the share of the wealth that the top 1% have. So that's what we then projected forwards to find that if we continued with the same increase in the share of wealth that we've seen over the last four years, then it'll only take us to next year before that top 1% group have more wealth than the rest of the world combined. A lot of people have criticized Oxfam after this report, including Tim Warstall. He's a contributor at Forbes, and here's what he wrote. That's pretty much how wealth distributions work, and it's probably true that there's more members of that global 1% working for Oxfam than there are billionaires in this world. Is this simply how wealth distributions work, or is there more at play here? The, the top 1% group includes about 70 million people on the planet. So a lot of people relative to the group that we then also focus on, which are the richest billionaires in the world. So we've also reported on the fact that it only takes 80 billionaires in the world to have the same amount as the bottom half of the planet. So the points that we're making in this report and the data that we're drawing on is really looking at the big macro picture of the distribution of wealth all over the world. And it's showing a remarkable trend that can't be denied that there is a real um, disparity in the amount of wealth that a very small proportion of people have compared to that that the rest of us have. Your report does show that the wealth owned by the bottom 50% was increasingly pretty dramatically from 2000 to about 2010, and then it started to change. So what happened in 2010 to make that change? Well, what we know is that particularly in developed countries that after the financial crisis, many countries have really struggled to recover. And we know that people have struggled to, um, to get their jobs back and to struggle to kind of pull themselves back up. There are some groups, however, that have made, managed to capitalize on the, the recovery since 2010 onwards. And these are largely people that have, we found have, have a lot of financial assets that have accumulated in value, and they've seen that value increase of those financial assets. So what it shows is that people that are in a position of wealth that already have a large amount of assets in the first place are really able to, to capitalize on the recovery in a way that people are, that don't have that starting point can't. Deborah Hardoon, senior researcher at Oxfam, thank you so much for joining us.